Hey guys, it's Ellen and welcome to my channel. What do you do when you're just so stuck and out of ideas and just, I don't know, how to paint? Well, let's just do some doodles and we're gonna do some watercolor doodles. Let's just do some fish today. We'll just blend and bleed some beautiful blues and purples and some greens. And I go over wet on wet with this and color and all that nonsense. It's just fun to experiment with color and just play with, you know, shapes and patterns. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's how I come up with other ideas. And it actually helps you teach you how to not make your colors muddy and how not to bleed them so that they don't come out pretty. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let me know if you like to do doodles if you don't like them. I'd like to hear about that. Leave a comment below. Also, check out my Patreon. Um, I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and a live stream on the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out in a second, right up in the top right-hand corner. So without further ado, let's get doodling! All right, guys, I'm going to go over some supplies, and I have it on an angle so you can see it better. I've noticed that I've had it straight on. It's kind of my hand covering everything, so this way you should be able to see it better. Um, I just have a piece of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It's like a seven by nine. I just taped it down with some Scotch magic tape on a thick piece of cardboard, so if I want to move it around, I can. Um, for brushes, I'll be using my Princeton eight long round, maybe my Princeton eight round, but I'll be using this big old floppy Princeton 12 Neptune series brush to just wash in color. So we're gonna do this kind of fun, uh, doodle like two different ways right one we're going to have a background with color and then just um layering color on top of the color so that you have this you know um kind of cool translucent effect and the other one we won't be doing that as much we're doing a different way without the color in the background so number one tip for this i mean people have asked me like how do i keep my colors from getting muddy is you pick colors that number one that wouldn't be muddy next to each other that's one way of doing it. Wait for it to dry in between. That's another way of doing it so that you don't wait completely to dry and go back on top of it and paint the color so it's not gonna get all brown and ugly and muddy. Or if you leave some kind of space in between the colors, um, when they bleed and blend, they're not gonna just go completely blending into each other and getting all brown and gross. So we can set up two ways. We can wait, wet the whole paper or we can wet partial of the paper. Depends on how you want to do it. I'm just going to grab my demo 12 with my water here. And I'm just going to kind of wet the paper. And then I'm just going to mix in some blues. And I'm going to do like, mono, you know, cool colors, ocean colors. Blue, there's a little pigment on there. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, blues and greens. You could throw in some yellows if you want, but purples, that kind of thing. Those all complement each other. So they won't get muddy. They're not the opposite. They're kind of complementary. So I have ultramarine here. I got this really loose. I have my Prussian blue up here. I have uh, my peacock blue here. If I want to add a little green, I'll mix a little bit of yellow in here. I made it all messy, but I can clean that up, right? Then I can also put in some purple. So I've got ultramarine blue. And I have magenta, or I have right over here, bright rose. I'm just going to activate that and stick that in here. And you get purple. And if I can make it more pinkish purple by adding more pink, just like that. So here we're going to play around with blending and bleeding color. So we can take this peacock blue. You can, because it's wet, you can kind of move the paper around now like this. You can kind of bleed it that way and that way. But see, because they're kind of complementary colors, I'm making this looser. So when you're bleeding them, they're not going to look hideous <laughs> next to each other because they kind of complement each other, right? When you throw the yellow in, it will it will complement also because it will turn into green. So I've got some purple in here. See, if I'm doing that bright rose, even more bright rose, I get more purple. Now I've got that yellow mixed in with the peacock. I can put a little of that green, see, and get a little bit of muddy. It would get muddy if it was hitting the purple because yellow and purple are opposites. But it's not getting muddy here. See how it's just kind of putting the color going down the page here? 
Now I put that yellow into my ultramarine by accident. And that was getting a little ugly, muddy yellow green color. So there's the blue. That's a really intense blue. Let's try some of this Prussian blue. Just letting it drip. Going to be dark. Splotch. Kind of move it down. And obviously it's going to stop down the bottom where the... Uh, well, there's no more <laughs> watercolor to go, which is, means no more paper and that fun stuff. So I'm going to grab some yellow. I can just pull them in here and have some green. See, it's going to make a muddy green. Why? Because that blue doesn't really work well. Ultramarine with yellow. That's why you always see me mix peacock blue with yellow. It makes a brighter green. Now if it goes in that, see? It's a bright green. You see how my little tricks are? <laughs> now, listen, this is something kids can totally do. And if it makes it muddy, who cares? If you want to do this with your kids, grandkids, whatever. I'm, I'm actually adding lilac now. And a little purple. I'm liking the purple. I'm feeling the purple on this one. I don't know why, but I like it. I'm going to make a deeper purple up here. Yeah, bleed that in a little bit. Sorry, my stinking tape is just driving me crazy here. I'm going to go add some more ultramarine blue to that purple. Look at that. And I'm going to put some peacock blue in here. Water that down. Now, it looks pretty dark, so don't freak out. It's kind of like tie-dye, kind of fun stuff. Will dry lighter. And we kind of do need it to. If it seems like if you don't want it so dark in the middle, you can kind of lift it a little bit. You can manipulate it. Lift it up. Just kind of move the paint around. So we're going to let this live on its own. Just let it dry. I might go in and just take some marks with this paintbrush to kind of mimic maybe like coral. Or I can wait till it dries, but let's see how it goes when it's wet on wet. Just kind of wiggling lines. See? Oh, yeah. See where that takes me. It might just bleed into a blob and it might not be kind of cool. <laughs> That's why it's like fun to play, guys. Now, the thicker the paint, the less it's going to bleed. So I put some thicker paint, but maybe I didn't want it so dark. So I'm just putting some kind of fun lines. Maybe some of the um, peacock blue. Let's see where that takes me. All right, it's still bleeding like a bloody old mess, so I'll have to wait a bit. Put some purple lines. Kind of fun though. Okay, I'm removing some paint. I remove it, tap it on my brush. I mean, excuse me, tap it on a paper towel. That's why it's good to have towels close by. If you want to do this kind of technique where you're just mopping up your color, you clean off your brush and you kind of lift and tap. Lift and tap. All this fun stuff you can do. You could use a paper towel too and create some kind of texture, but I'm just kind of going down in like lines. See how I'm doing this? See where this takes me. This is very therapeutic. Um, just every day it seems to be so stressful and we need some stress-free fun. See, I'm going back in here. I can see it's slightly dried. Adding in some wiggles with just a little bit of this um, peacock blue. It's kind of a turk color. Getting a little darker over here. Loving it though. This is what I'm talking about why it doesn't get muddy. It would get muddy if your yellow is touching your ultramarine. See how this green in here? It's kind of this ugly meh green. These two colors make a meh green. Maybe a little more natural meh green for the environment. I like this color and this color, and I mix them often 
which is peacock blue and yellow, because it makes a bright green. So see, the peacock here is in the yellow here in this section. It's more brighter and fun. And that is why I use those two colors a lot. I like to have my colors bright. Now, you may choose to have more natural muted colors, and therefore you should use ultramarine blue and yellow. You see where I'm going with that? Now this pink, I might grab just some of this bright rose. Ooh. And that will complement all of those blues and turn them into purple. See how much different it is when you put it next to the ultramarine here? Kind of bleed that down. Mm -hmm. and that's why it's not muddy. So keeping you from being muddy, I didn't have a problem with any of these colors except these two, right? Because the combination of those. So if you want to do a test, I would take a strip of paper and put the colors next to each other, bleed them and see what is going to be eh. So you know not to do that on your actual picture. All right, so we're going to let that baby dry and we are going to move on to our next one. Okay, for this one, I just taped it down just to keep it steady, but we don't necessarily need to tape down. Now, I'm going to grab my Princeton 8 round, and I have all these colors again, these complementary colors, and we're just going to go and play in making fish shapes. Right? Um, so basically, they can be more rounded and more pointy, with just simple curve and curve connected. Right, there's your fish shape. And then for the tail, you can just kind of go like this, same thing, real simple, pulling out the two little curves. If you want to put a little fin, put a fin, not necessary, just make a simple fish shape. Now this little pointy here, it could be less pointy. And I'm using the same bright colors again. So it could be rounder, like an oval, but again, and then the tail could be like this, or it could just be like a triangle kind of going like that, like this. You choose, you know, get a variety of different ones. While that's still wet, we can play with bleeding in color on the fishes and see what happens, right? I took some ultramarine. This is the fun part. <laughs> so I'm just doing some, um, those were the, the peacock blue. Now I have this bright lime green that I mix with the yellow and peacock. They're all kind of going the same way. So it's kind of like a school of fish. Now you could make it where the tail is a different color. So here we go. We'll make a green fish up here. Right, let that dry a bit and then we can go and add a little blue tail, change it up, make a darker green fish. So you're going to do this mindless, relaxing, mine's a little wet, too wet, fishes. I made them kind of small, you can make like a little school of fish. Every now and then you can throw in a really cute little pretty little purple one, little baby saying hello to his mom and dad. See that? Now, and then still with these ones, even the purple one, you can bleed in a little blue, the tip of your tip, 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 tip. Same thing with this guy, you could take the peacock, maybe just kind of play around with dotting in color, and then maybe dotting in color again, and that's the ultramarine. See, these are the fun things we're going to be doing here. <laughs> this is what you're supposed to be doing, playing with wet and wet. Then you can experiment with colors that work well together and colors that don't work well together. And even if they don't work well together, you can always manipulate it to do something fun and unique. Now I made this fairly small. I might make some bigger ones now. Let's get a bigger fish in here. We have bigger fish to fry. Get it? Ha 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 ha. So here we go, the same sh simple shape. I don't want to bore you with 
showing you every single fish that I'm going to paint. Just going to show you a few. And then I'm going to talk about layering them when they dry. So you just put those down. These are simple shapes. You can still bleed um, more color. I need to do a Prussian blue one bleeding. So here's a Prussian blue. Keep touching it and it's going to bleed, bleed, bleed. Bleed, 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 bleed. Kind of cool, right? Get like a tie-dye looking fish. Bleed it up here. Bleed the tails. Let me do one in the middle. That's way cool. <laughs> Just a little tapping. Can do some more up here. Just a big old dot. And same thing with the um, other ones here. Just take peacock blue. You can tell I'm like having fun bleeding all the colors. Right? You could try and do like a stripe. See what happens. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'll do that again. Right? And then with that bleed, we're going to go and play with patterns and stuff like that. So you're going to go ahead and do all this kind of color fishes. Now, I have them pretty se separated right now. What I also want to tell you to do is make them like a little school of fish. Get a bunch together that are hanging out. See? And then maybe some darker ones. I don't have any dark ones here. I'm making all the kind of same kind of tail. I could change it up like this one. But it might be cool just to keep it similar tail, similar kind of shape. I could put a little fin here maybe. Just so you have it kind of makes sense going together. See how I'm kind of grouping them? Maybe a little yellow green here. Small, big. They're getting grouped because they're in a school. They're going to class. <laughs> and play around with the purple. Kind of grab some of my pink. Make it pretty purple. The purple is going to be really great. Just throw in, throw in a little pink one every now and then. But see how I kind of like big, small, medium together. Big, small, medium together. That's kind of how you want to do this. This is so therapeutic. If you are struggling what to paint, paint something fun with color. Now I chose all cool colors. If you want to make your fishes a little bit darker, a little bit more green, go ahead and do that. There are no rules to the fish. There are no rules to the amount of fish. This would be great if you were going to do a really great birthday card for somebody and just fill the whole card up at the front with all the fishes, right? Do patterns in the fish. Again, just the polka dots. We're going to do more patterns as it dries. But right now, I'm just going to do the fish. I could do this all day. And it's so pretty when it's done. And it's so such such a simple shape. Right? You can do do and then just do the little tail. Like I said, you could add a little fin on both top and bottom if you want to. Change it up. Tap in some darker colors. Playing around with that. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna fill this whole page with all your little fishes, tapping in your fish. When they dry, this one feels dry, you could take your Princeton 8 long round and then you could play around with pattern again. Same color or different color. I might grab ultramarine blue and do a pattern like a scallop. See scallop one, two, and then kind of go in here. Now it's an opposite edge scallop. Maybe you could go in the other way, but I don't care. That's my fish and I'll do what I want. And we go like that. And then you could add the little lines to the tail. See, these are things you can do. This is still a little damp now. You can do some stripes. 
This is like doodling all day long. The fish. All right, we're gonna continue with this and come back. Oh no, I'm not Speedy Gonzales. It's just me just filling in, showing you how I fill in all my little fishes in a time lapse so you don't sit there and be bored, monotonous, me ch chatting away <laughs> and painting my fish. So I'm just filling it in. Um, you can fill it in as much as you want, as little as you want, but I decided to fill a lot of the fish in. And it's, you know, like a set by nine, so it takes a little time. If it was a card size, it'd be smaller, it would take less time. But it's a lot of fun. It's very th therapeutic just to keep painting the little fishes, going all over the place, you know, mixing up the colors. I start with one color, move it around, and then go to another color, move that around, so that helps um, fill it in faster. So that's how I do it. You can just do one at a time if you want to do it that way, but this is how I kind of move my color around the page. It just works a little faster this way. So this is how I fill in my fish. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> okay, so now we painted all the fish, and now we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna layer it. So we're gonna take like maybe the green. Now you remember that out of my green blue with the yellow doesn't like it. So do the green over like the nice pretty blue, which is this turquoise. So you do a nice a light wash. So you can see the blue underneath it. You see that? You can see a little blue underneath that. It's hard to see in an angle if I'm zooming in or not. <laughs> and I'll just show you. It has like a nice, when the when you have the light wash on top of that, you can see the one coming through. So for the blue one, like I said, that that's gonna make a muddy green. You can experiment it, but I'm not gonna do it in my picture. I would take the peacock blue and I would do that color because I know it's complimentary. It's not going to make it ugly and put that one on here. Now you don't have to do that everywhere. You can do that in certain places. Maybe I do another peacock blue on top of that one, even though that was peacock. If I do another wash of the peacock on top of the peacock, you get this pretty like double layer. All right, so here we can go like make a bigger fish on this one. And you see the fin behind it? Kind of fun, right? And same thing with you know ultramarine. So if you left more space, I didn't leave more space. I've gone to kind of crowd it a little bit. You just go on top in certain areas, and you get that fun little fishy fish. Take the purple one, purple color. Go on top of the blue. See that? That's the layering technique. Again, with the purple, um, let's try the purple on the peacock. Not bad. It worked. <laughs> it could have gone either way. And here you go with this. And you put another purple over here just for the heck of it. And he's like in the space. And then you can put a lighter one on top of that. These are the things you do to make it more interesting. Adding some more purples. So you get all your little guys in here. I'm going to layer purple one here. I would just do it here and there. You don't have to do it everywhere, but it's kind of fun to see the double layers of the fish, you know? This one kind of kind of here. Maybe the tail just kind of goes on top of him. Now, you can keep your patterns. I'm going to grab my skinnier brush. Simple or intricate, like we did this one. I've got the Prussian blue here. Do some stripes. You know, this is where you get funky with your fish. Have the stripes coming this way too. Just do the little dot eyes. You want to do dark blue eyes on all the fish. You don't have to do patterns in them, by the way. Just do little dots for the eyes everywhere. I wouldn't get the eyes intricate. And like I said, go back in and grab some ultramarine. And you can play around with the patterns, some stripes. I wouldn't do every fish either. You know, it's nice to just have a few that have it and not everything. So maybe some open circles. Just really simple kind of patterns. 
I don't know if I would do anything here with the ones that are on top of each other. Maybe this one I can just do some stripes going this way. You can do polka dots. Get really, you know, imaginative. The little dots on top of those dots that we did that we bled. Here's the dot for the eye. Um, make a deeper green. Some of the green fish. So maybe I'll put some stripes in this one. And then stripes this way. This is the, the kind of fun doodling part. Do, do, do. You sit there and you're thinking, you're watching TV, or just watch your mind wander. You can do some bigger dots here. So what we did here, we can kind of do in our tie-dye kind of looking one we did in the beginning. I'm going to put this one aside and do bigger dots here. And then do some stripes here. Bigger stripes, bigger dots, all that fun stuff. Simple doodles. You can add like gold touches if you wanted to. I'm going to do the dots here. Maybe some stripes. This goes this way. All this fun doodah stuff. Doodah, doodah. See, little dots and then the dots. Okay, so we're going to put this one aside. Like I said, you just put a simple dot for the eyes. I'm just using Prussian blue. And that's all I'm going to do in all the fish. Because I think the simpler the better. It looks kind of pretty. You don't want to make it too complicated. It's a doodle. It's supposed to be fun and simple. So I'm just doing the little dots on all the eyes. If I miss one, oh well, he's blind. But just going through all my little fishes. Did I miss a fish? Okay, these guys, they were blind. <laughs> all right, we're gonna put that one away. I'm going to come back to our tie-dye fun, and then we'll be done. So, complementary, the same colors we used before. This one, we're going to try and do that coral. I have that ultramarine blue, and kind of do the shape here, but we can kind of just wash in. I'm going to take my number eight brush around, wash down the blue, and just make like wiggles, see those wiggle shapes? Kind of connect them. Now that it's dry, you see this is not going to get muddy because it's dry. So we're just doing those wiggle shapes for coral. And then we're going to do the fish when it's dry on top of it. Same thing we did with the other one, but see that one had a white background. This one has this fun, funky background. And with this fun, funky background, you can go back in and play with like adding in some you know, nice doodle kind of touches here. I just put a circle here. I could put little dots that go around. Get really creative with some dots of the dark Prussian blue in the coral. See, just playing around with that. Um, you can add more coral with a different color like this uh, peacock blue. Just kind of wiggle the coral. It's just like wiggle the line, see? Yeah. Get kind of bigger on the bottom. Just these wiggle lines going from the bottom, like a little tree that's wiggly. And little, little ones coming out. And the ends of them wouldn't be pointy, they'd be kind of rounded. And you can have some green, this yellow green, kind of going through it too. seaweed see look at that just wiggling that green you could just take yellow itself although I made my yellow more like a chartreuse green go up in here really simple mix the yellow with the peacock more peacock and you have like a turquoise green Kind of cut that through. 
you know, all these kind of wiggly things. Can go all the way through the top, coming down. Isn't this fun? <laughs> Grab your ultramarine blue. Do the same thing here. And if you want to put more, like, see, like, we did this funky blue shape. We can go and add some more of these funky blue circles. Grab your peacock. This is where we're getting really kind of creative, doing the abstract kind of part of it. I'm loosening up some peacock blue. I'm going to put some over here, these circles. And as you do the circles, think about other patterns too. Like, again, we can have a circle within a circle. Why not, right? We're getting really inventive here. Adding some more ultramarine in here. Just kind of playing around with the ultramarine blue. Can do a dab in the circle there, another dab. Right, so then we're gonna do this another pass. We're gonna have do some small circles. This is the watercolor doodle part that I love. And because it's all these pretty purples and blues, it's a lot of fun. So you got the purple again, blue. So I'm gonna just play around with doing this, doing little circles, maybe little teeny ones here going into the coral. Or you could have all, you know, this could be really cool if it was all these wiggly lines going down. I'm giving you ideas to make it different for yourself. You can just do a bunch of wiggle lines going down just like this. You know, that lilac color. That could be so cool and different. So it actually kind of looks like I have a bunch of wiggle lines, but why not? So I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back and do our fish. So just like the fish one we did before, now that this is dry, we're going to go over this with little fishes, big fishes. I'm time-lapsing this one fast also, but you can see what I'm saying. You don't need to, be, to talk about every single little fish. You're just taking the different colors, you're grouping them. Maybe you have more on the bottom and less on top, bigger, smaller, whatever. You just go around and put all your little fishes in, all your little colors, and you know, same kind of technique that we did with the other fish. Just do it here. And like I said, I'm spacing mine out a little different. And just go ahead and do that. And once that's all dry, we're going to come back and we're going to add some little more finishing touches. All right, guys, now that it's dry, I have some gouache right here. I'll add a little water to it so I can activate it, clean up my brush better because it was dirty. And then we're going to play around. If you don't have gouache, you can use a white gel pen um, patterns with the fish with white. So it could be the scallop edge, like we can have a line here, and do the little scallops. Ooh, not See, if it's not wet enough, it won't move, and if it's too wet, it will be translucent. You have to get a little, play around with it. See how to do the little scales on this one. My first couple of passes were meh, but Get in the groove, right? And you could just do like white little lines going here. Put a little white dot for his eye. Um, you wouldn't have to do it anywhere. And then of course you can use the white to do patterns. Stripes. My, my hand was a little wiggly there. Now, I wouldn't do the white everywhere again. Just like I talked about with the other ones. Just some fish that would make sense that will show up. Like the darker fish, it's gonna show up. You can have little polka dots. Um, little lines going like this, just playing around with pattern at this point. You know, all that good stuff. Circles, open circles. This is where you get creative. Open circles here. You can put a dot inside that. Little stripes here. You can do little dashes. See? Again, the little dot for the eye. 
little dots, little white dots. Instead of the little blue dots like we had with the other one, these guys can all have little white dots because maybe they're in the ocean and they can only see with white dots. <laughs> Just different, right? We want to play with our paints. So it's all watercolor except a little bit of white. Again, I'll add a little bit so the gouache dries out. You gotta add a little water to that. Fun bold stripes, right? And then we can do the white and add some nice patterns. Don't don't be afraid to play. Can add some little dots to the coral. You can add blue dots to the coral. I'm just showing you different things to do. You want to add a little gold? Do that. I kind of like the white. It's kind of that pretty um, coastal vibe with the white and the blues. I mean, you could have, like I said, any kind of any colors you want. I'm just doing what I think I want to do. Here's a little white dot for his eye. Boom. Do a little white circle in between those little circles we painted. See? circle within a circle. It all makes sense. You can do a bunch of little white dots kind of connecting around these. It could be like little bubbles. Right? Follow the, have the white dots follow the, um, the fun, funky, wiggly, kind of seaweed looking things you did. You know, play around and take purples and blues. I'm gonna go back in here and put some more patterns in some of these. So that is this one. And play around with this too. You can do little white dots. These are all kind of fun doodles. Right? I didn't do dots on these ones, but stripes. gouache. I like the white with it because it's, again, for me personally, more coastal with the blues and the whites. And, you know, don't have to put them everywhere. Just a couple of touches of it. See, so, yeah, just a couple of stripes, maybe some dots on these ones. It just changes it up a little bit. Makes it more fun. So there you have it, guys. Our two little doodles, you know, one with the background, one without the background. We're layering them, which painting patterns. Super simple and easy, lots of fun, very easy to do. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let me know if you like these kind of doodles. Maybe it's too easy and not sophisticated enough, but I think you can make it sophisticated by adding real intense details, you know, simple shapes or making more intense stylized fish. But it's just to give you an idea and then the colors choices too just helps a lot. And like I talked about how not to make it muddy. So thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you're de-stressing by painting some doodles and enjoying your day. Take care and I will speak to you soon.